Mental Ray is a way of rendering 3D objects using photon mapping to create a natural light source from the objects themselves. It supports caustics, light through water, glossy, soft or scattered, and specular reflection and transmission. Photon mapping is a two-path global illumination algorithm that solves the rendering equation. Rays from the light source and camera are traced independently until termination is met and are then connected in the second step of the process to produce a radiance value. It is used to simulate light interacting with different objects and is capable to simulate refraction of light through transparent surfaces such as glass. Photon mapping also has the ability to stimulate surface light scattering in translucent materials, meaning it can create the effect caused by particle matter such as smoke, water or vapour. Ray tracing is a technique for generating images by tracing light paths through pixels in an image plane and simulating effects of encounters with virtual objects. It is capable of a high degree of realism, but it comes at a higher computational cost. The ray tracing technique is best suited for still images for film and television special effects because it has the ability to be rendered ahead of time. Global illumination is where all the objects in a scene are considered as potential sources of light. It differs from regular lighting because the light doesn't come from a direct light source and can reflect off of surfaces on the scene even if they are not reflective. Global illumination is used to give a more natural feel to the light in 3D graphics and is similar to the lighting used in cinematography. In cinematography, the same principles of global illumination are also important. For example, in a live action film, light bouncing is always factored in. The light which reflects off the walls and floors creates a natural source of light and simulates the use of a fill light. This helps soften the light in the, in the concerning scene. Filmmakers use reflectors as a method of bouncing the light back to the actors with natural light, which takes away the need of bringing extra lights to a location. Okay, so now Costa has explained what global illumination and final gather is. I can show you here in Maya. So here I've pre-made a box which has six sides so no light can escape. On the top of the box here I've got a direction light. The direction is facing down and it's got an intensity of one. Now the purpose of this light is to create direct light in the scene. Now this is the light which is going to move down from the top of the roof onto the objects. But this will not have the photons emitting from it. That will be made from a point light, which I will show you a bit later. Inside the scene here, I've got a few objects. I've got a cup, I've got a cylinder, I've got a table, and I've got a chandelier. Now the chandelier isn't going to emit any light. The chandelier is just there to show you that the light will be coming down from the roof. Now, with the default settings set, and with the May renderer being on default itself, light would just come from the roof. And it would just light up the top of these objects. And I'll show you what it would look like now. As you can see, the top of the objects are lit up as the rim of the cup, the top of the table, the top of the cylinder, and around the floor. But there is no light bouncing, and there's a lot of black space. So now I'll show you how to fix that. If we close this here, what we'll do now is, is create a point light. So you go create, light, and point light. And you click on that. Now I've already made one myself, and I've placed it on the top of the scene near the chandelier. If you click on that, and we go to the attribute editor, we'll have some settings. Now what you want to do is to go and click on the tab that says mental ray. Now what that will do is it will enable you to click on another box called caustics and global illumination. Now click on the box that says emit photons. Now when you click on this, a few settings will appear. And we'll leave them the same for now.
Now what we want to do is enable the box that says Global Illum Photons. So to do this, we need to go to Render Settings. We need to go to the Renderer and choose Mental Ray. Click on the tab saying Indirect Lighting and click on Global Illumination. And we'll leave the settings the same for now. Press Close. Now, as you can see, Global Illum Photons isn't enabled yet, so you just click on this box again and it will enable them. So for now, we'll leave the settings the same and we'll have a look at what the render looks like. As you can see, there is a big difference to what the render looked like before. Light has bounced around this scene and caused a few different things to happen. Number one is that there is no more dark spaces around the scene. As you can see, the walls are now visible and you can see everything clearly. If you look at the objects, you can see there's a bit of a gradient effect happening. As you can see where the light is more intense at the top, you can see that it's lighter and at the bottom it's more darker. Now as this, there's less light getting to these objects, you can see that there's shadows being created on the walls. Along with the shadows on the walls, you can see far on the left at the top, for the blue cup, you can see that there's some blue color bleeding. Same for on the right for the red cylinder and same for the green table. Now this is all good that we got it working and it's a lot more, realis more realistic than before but we wanted to fix up some of the patchiness of the walls and some of the overall quality. So we'll close this but we'll save the picture. Now what we'll do is we'll go over to the Global Illum Photons. Now this will increase the quality a bit more when it emits the photons. So we'll add another zero. So it's 100,000. We'll have a look at the render. As you can see, there's a lot, much, a lot less patchiness on the walls and it looks a lot cleaner. If we look at the old screenshot, that was a lot less quality. And that looks a lot, less, a lot more smoother. Now another setting we can change is over in the render settings. Now this is the accuracy of the global illumination. So we could probably set this to about 2000 or more. So I'll put this to 2500. And we'll try now. As you can see, it smooths it out even more, and the shadow is a lot smoother too. So it looks a lot nicer than before. Back into the point light settings. Go to the top, once my computer stops lagging. What we want to do is, is make sure the intensity of the point light itself is on zero to make sure that it is emitting no light and becoming an indirect light. That is on zero. Also too we've got here the exponent. So when you lower this number this will increase the brightness of the scene. So you probably want to keep this on 2, but I'll show you what it will look like if you put it for 1. As you can see here that it's oversaturated, and this is a similar effect to what it would look like if we put the photons onto the directional light. So we'll put that back to 2. Another thing that can enhance this scene is Final Gather. So to enable Final Gather, we'll go into the render settings. We'll go down in the indirect lighting tab to Final Gather. Now we've got a few settings here, but we'll leave them for now. And we'll do a quick render. Okay, so now we can look at it 
I'm going to see it's nice and smooth with realistic type shading with a studio quality type of feel. Now, we've got a lot of different settings in Final Gather. And a lot of them you can change for the final product. So we could change it to actually to around 300. And we could add more light bounce, but I'll keep it at one. Now I'll check how quality is. As you can see here, it's a lot smoother and with less jagged edges. You can add the quality up more, but the more you add it, the more longer the render time will be. So that's how you use global illumination and final gather in Maya.